はいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはい Just do a basic, simple video. It's less work. <laughs> to be honest, that's the reason why I'm doing it. Not, not out of any altruistic intent. I'm just like, eh. Yeah, it's actually not that much work, to be honest, to edit and add that layering. It's not that crazy. I just thought it'd be nice to take it easy today. Something simple work. Something simple. I'm very excited about my, my, my journey on, on, on X. I'm growing. I've talked about this on multiple videos now, but just because it's something that's exciting and interesting. The, the idea of growing an audience there. Because I feel like that's more me, you know, with this ASMR channel. So there's a lot of things I can't say because. <laughs> <laughs> People get so upset. But on the X, I can just like I can talk about anything and everything. And you know, I'm actually trying to keep it balanced. So you'd think that oh, he's getting super political on there, but actually, oh, I do give political takes and whatnot. But actually, in reality, it's I think it's quite balanced. I, I like it. I'll share maybe like some some Bible scriptures or like just talk about. Some video game news and reshare some video game news and like some random thought I had. And it's actually a nice mix of a lot of things. I have a lot of interesting thoughts to share.、Um, and I, I, I want to grow an audience there that can just see me post all sorts of things, whether it's videos, whether it's memes, whether it's just random thoughts. Um, whatever it is. And it's exciting. And I've, I've, I've,、um, I've talked about how my goal is to, to, to get a follower a day. And I've been doing that. I think it's been. I think it's been like five, six days since I started that. And every single day I've managed to do it, right? Get at least one follower a day. I think one day I got two. But it's, it's encouraging because you'd think it's just one follower, but like, it's just one follower every day. But it's proof of concept. Like, something is working. I don't think it's gonna stay one follower a day. I think it's gonna eventually grow. There's someone I follow, I've、um, been watching、uh, his videos for a while now, and I commented on one of his posts, and he found it funny. And I was just like, this is so cool. It shows me that if I keep doing this, If I keep at it, eventually, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna strike gold. If you think about the image of someone digging for gold, digging, 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 digging. Have you ever seen that, that picture of the person digging for gold? Like two people are digging for gold. One person gets really, really close, like he's digging underground, but he just gives up because I've been digging for so long, I can't find anything. But he gives up right before. He gets to the goal. Like, he doesn't know that the goal is just like, it's right there. Just dig, dig a little more and you get it. And he gives up, but then there's someone else who ends up getting it instead because they didn't give up. I think of that, I'm like, if I just keep going, I think I'm going to find, find amazing success on that platform, on this platform. So that's my goal, right? And also, like,、uh, oh, my mom is calling.、Um, 
but yeah, like. I think it's also important to diversify. Like, I don't want to be too dependent on YouTube and YouTube alone. You want to have multiple eggs and multiple baskets. So I'm going to be patient and I'm going to be loyal to the soil, as they say. And I think I'll find success. I think I'll be okay. And the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing about X now wasn't always this way that people get paid. People get paid. Apparently it pays more than YouTube now, now that they've changed the policies. They they are previously, I'm not, I'm not sure about the details of how this works, but uh, before how it work is, you know, when you're scrolling through someone's post and you go into the replies, you see ads in the replies, and that's how people are getting paid through those ads in the replies. Now it's a system where you get paid for engagement with premium users. So everyone has a basic as a blue check and stuff like that. I don't know how that gets anyone any money for the... I don't know how that works, but they changed it to that. And people were skeptical, like, is this going to work? Like, what does that mean? No one really knew if that was a good or bad thing. But, oh my God. It was dramatic, the increase of revenue that people started getting from that system. People were posting and sharing what they were earning in the previous month versus what they earned after that change was made. So, like, one person shared, like, they were getting, like, a thousand and something dollars. And then after that change was implemented, they got six thousand dollars. So, oof. That is an unbelievable increase in revenue for creators. Regardless of what you're getting paid, the point is you're getting paid to post. Like, I can just post like my ass is itchy. And if some people find that hilarious and it gets shared a bunch of times, I can get paid. And the difference between YouTube and... and, and so people are saying it's, it's paying more than X. I mean, X is paying more than YouTube now. But the difference between YouTube and X is like, with X, you can put like very little effort like in a few seconds, you can post something and it can get viewed by hundreds and thousands, of, if not millions of people. And you get paid for that because there's engagement. With YouTube, you know, you put all this effort into one video and you might upload a video every few days. I upload every day, but that's not what everyone does. A lot of people upload once a week, a few times a week. And, you know, they'll get a few thousand views or... If you're fortunate, a few hundred thousand views. If you're if you're out of if you're like through the roof, you might, you get millions of views. But you're still uploading like a few times a week at most. In most in the vast majority of cases, I mean, very few people people upload every day on this platform. Whereas with X, people are posting multiple times every day. And if you're a big account, that's that's constant engagement. Millions of impressions, and, and yeah, so it adds up, and that's, I think that's why people are earning so much, dude, on that platform. Like, so, so, so much. So, um, I'm trying to, to get to that level, but I also want to share meaningful things, I don't want to share nonsense. But that's what's exciting, is like I get to just be myself and then share my my thoughts and my interests and hopefully I can turn that into something but I've, I've just been thinking about that for the past couple of days um, in other news I was, this has been a recurring thought of mine this is not a new thought I've shared this many times on this channel uh, it just baffles me that love in general is kind of put on the back burner like is that even an expression the back burner? what the hell is a back burner i don't know people kind of oh man uh sorry i had an interruption i was basically saying people kind of reserve love for later it's, it's not a priority it's not like a thing that people really 
care too much about these days. At least that's what, what it looks like. And even the way the culture talks about marriage and family and children and stuff like that, you're like, damn. It's absurd to me, this notion that there is anything more important for anyone besides getting married and having children. People will say, um, like, uh, you know, like, oh, you need to have your own interests and you need to have other things and all these sort of things. Look, I agree that you need to have interests. I agree that you need to have other things you can dedicate your time to. It's, it's, it's healthy and it's, it's, it's good. And yeah, but this notion that there's anything like at all better than love, better than having children is absurd. And it shows you how our culture is really degraded because we've, we've uh, placed, placed emphasis on the wrong things. Are there exceptions to this? Uh, uh, like this idea that marriage is the best path for it, path forward and having children? Yeah, but there's so few and far between that the likelihood that you fall into that exception is very, very slim. You know, but like there's some people like like uh, like nuns and you know, people who dedicate their lives to to public service in terms of helping others and people who literally are incapable of having kids but even then they can still adopt so you can still get married and adopt and, and all these sort of things but you know there are a few 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 exceptions but generally speaking love is such a beautiful thing guys it's such an amazing 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 thing this idea of getting to know someone and being with them and building a relationship over a lifetime um, and all these sort of things. <laughs> I didn't want to say, I didn't want to sound crass or anything, but even having sex, all these sort of things, it's beautiful. Like it's, it's, it's amazing. And out of having sex comes children who are also such a blessing on this earth. And a lot of people are anti-children, which is such a weird thing. I don't know, I don't know how that's been normalize as much as it has but that's a wicked thing to, to hate kids to hate children um, to have any sort of antagonistic attitude towards children is it's a, it's a big 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 red flag because we're supposed to protect them we're supposed to love them but there are a lot of people who don't and in fact despise them in many ways find them annoying find them I, I, I can't trust someone who doesn't like children you know and I can't trust you there's something wrong with you. There's a, like a, a moral deformity within you. It's not normal. And we should not accept that from people. It's a big, big, big red flag. But like when someone is just like, I don't like children. Da, 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 da. Like it's, it's very weird. And as a culture, we should definitely develop stigmas around such individuals because it's not... You can't have them just walking around a society that's meant to be full of children and, and, and youth. And you have people like that. Imagine people like that come into power, like they gain prominence in government and stuff, and they have inherently anti-child beliefs, anti-children beliefs. Uh, that would be a serious problem for society. And I think that's what's happening right now. I think there are a lot of people in government that are like that. And we're seeing leaders getting elected that don't have children. I actually think you shouldn't be allowed to run for office if you're not a, a family person. I think if you're not married and don't have children, I don't think you should be allowed to run. That might be a controversial opinion to, to some people. I don't think you're allowed to run for office. That's my personal belief. Um, that's how a lot of... Uh, that's how a lot of places operate generally already anyway. People are just distrustful of someone that isn't married and doesn't have kids because they don't really have a stake in the future. You, you tend to be viewed as a very individualistic person. Because think about the sort of person that's just like, I don't want to get married and I don't want to have children because I just want to live for myself. 
that's essentially what it boils down to you want. I just want to live for me. I don't want those burdens. I want freedom, freedom, freedom to do what I want whenever I want. Me, 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 me. You don't want someone like that leading you. But also someone who has children and wants to have grandchildren and so on and so forth. That person is more likely to think about the future. They're more likely to think about the sort of things that impact future generations because their children are going to inherit that world. So as a community, it's in our best interest to have someone who, who is making the same considerations as us because when we're making decisions, we're like, how are my children going to do this? How are my children going to flourish in an environment like this? Like that, like that. So we want leaders that also have those same concerns and, and uh, interests. Leaders who promote marriage, who promote family, who promote these ideals that are just good for society. It's just healthy. It's not healthy when people aren't getting married and having children. It destroys societies. And we're seeing that right now. Yesterday I talked about declining birth rates and how catastrophic that is for, for certain countries. And it's putting them in financial pickles and they're at risk of vanishing. Really. But, you know, when people aren't getting married, that usually also means people aren't going to be having children as much. It, it's all connected. And yeah, the, the, the results are, are, are disastrous. So for me, I think about marriage. And look, like I said in yesterday's video, at, towards the end of yesterday's video, Chip said at the beginning because not everyone watches to the end. <laughs> But you can't really force someone to do something they don't want to do. You can't really coerce someone into doing the right thing. At least not in the long term. It's not a good long term strategy. So when we're talking about things like marriage and we're talking about things like having children, people have to be convinced that this is a great thing. This is actually a fulfilling, wonderful thing. So I think as a community, as a society, we need to get better at marketing marriage, we need to get better at marketing children because there are other people that are marketing other lifestyles that seem appealing but aren't actually appealing. So just in terms of love, let's like just focus on love for a little bit and we'll put children to the side. I see a lot of girls these days, you know, they've been sold this idea of sexual liberation you know, men are going to press us and we need to start doing, like, we need to start acting like them, which just never made sense to me as an argument. Like, why be exactly like the people you claim have been oppressing you and whatnot? Why, why engage in the exact same practices? Why not distance yourself from the way they do things? That would make the most, the most sense to me. But no, what we saw is women just acting like men, like godless, unruly men at least. And they're out here sleeping around and getting into these meaningless relationships and doing terrible things that in the long term really aren't good for them. It might feel nice in the moment. And you could argue if it feels nice in the moment or not. I don't personally know too many girls. I don't think I know any girls. That if they're being honest, they enjoy like one night stands, for example. I think... Pretty much every girl, when that, when that happens, you know, there might be some exceptions, but in the case of those exceptions, I do think there's something wrong with you. But, you know, with most girls, after a one night stand, they usually feel kind of dirty and used. Like, I don't... Like, they want something deeper, more meaningful. They don't like this idea that they can just be used for sex and then the guy just leaves. He doesn't call them. He doesn't want anything to do with them. Like, he'll just be used for sex. Again, I, I do think the culture is very, very moral, and there are people, women even, who who get numb to that and kind of just do it. And hey, it is what it is. But for women in particular, I don't think this is fun. I, I do think there are a lot of guys because guys are just different. Guys are just different. Uh, who who relish this sexual liberation movement they're so happy they're like, what? I can fuck you and not have to come in I don't have to care about you I don't have to call you 
just you're free, you're 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 a feminist and you can you can do everything men can and all this sort of stuff. Well that's amazing. Like so many guys are signing up for that and they're very excited. But these are not the sort of men you want to associate with anyway. <clears throat> so I say all that to say I don't understand how that got swapped out for this model of Commit to one man. Don't sleep with a man until you get married. And you and the reason for that is, though there's multiple reasons, but just from a romantic sense, um, you want to be sure. You want to be sure that this is a man worth committing to, and you want to kind of pin down the fundamentals. Is he going to get along with my family? Do we share similar values? Is he is he a hard worker? Can he take care of me? all these sort of things and once you figure that out and you, you decide that you know what just as a on a personal basis i like being around this person i can see myself living with this person indefinitely for a lifetime and, and beyond i will marry them. i will marry this man boom you get married and then you can have it you know, a lot of people are very silly, very stupid, so they'll say things like, but you need to sleep with him to know that um, you're sexually compatible. What a silly argument. Think about it. Let's say he, che- he, he checks every other box, but there's this one area you're not sure of, like, are we sexually compatible? Are you really going to abandon a man for that reason? You don't know if he's going to be good in bed? But he checks every other box, which is probably the most important stuff, even more important than sex. Just, and this is the thing that frustrates me, right? These people will say this, they'll get married, and, and then they won't, they won't sleep with their husbands anyway. How many marriages do it, are, are sexless? So people will say all this nonsense, and then they get married, and then they refuse to have sex with their husbands anyway. So... <laughs> So, so if you're going to do that anyway, why, you might as well prioritize the main things, the actually important things, and the sex is important to you. I don't, I don't think it's good to, to, to deprive your partner's sex. But, yeah, yeah. You wait until you're married to have sex. You, you, you prioritize things like emotional maturity. Can we have good dialogue? Can we have intellectual dialogue? Are you going to be there for me and in tough times and when it matters and how are you with my parents how are you with my friends how are you with my family so on and so forth how are you with money like these are the important considerations and then once you figure all that and you're like this is great you get married and look sex is it's not a one size fits all situation everyone's unique and you can learn you can learn what turns someone on, what they like, what they don't like, and you can give them that. Like it's, it's what, what, why are we so um, so silly about this topic? Like it's just impossible to please your partner. No, you can. You can please someone. Like maybe your partner likes uh, wearing lingerie and whatnot. Uh, you know, people's kinks and interests in, in, in the bedroom. That's your business. But you can learn, guys. You can learn someone's body. You can learn someone's turn-ons. And you can deliver on that. So this concern that, what if she's not good in bed? What if she's not good in bed? All this nonsense. No, like, you get good over time. As you learn each other. With each person, that's the case. With each person, you kind of have to learn. So this notion that a person just can be good at sex in general, it's nonsense. Because the techniques you might be using on one person might not work at all on another person. They might not like the things that you do with so-and-so. You shouldn't. You really shouldn't be doing anything with anyone that you're not married to, really. But yeah, I just think it's so immature the way we talk about sex, the way we talk about love in general. So I think waiting until you're married and developing a strong emotional connection with the person you you want to marry, it will set you up for a life, for a marriage of success. Because you know that you've got a friend with you, someone you can talk to, 
someone you share a deep, deep emotional bond with. And that just makes the sex better. It makes everything better, right? Um, and that's why I say, like, what, what's better than love? Like, what, money? Career? There are a lot of people with great careers that end up killing themselves. And there's many examples of that. There are a lot of people with lots of money that end up killing themselves. I don't know anyone that's in a happy relationship that's just like, they're just in love and happy that, that kills themselves. I don't know anyone that does that. I've never heard of anyone that does that. Usually, there's something missing in their life. But someone who is, first of all, they've done the work to take care of their own minds. and Because look, you can have everything you could possibly want, whether it's a, a good wife, a good job, or you're respected by your community. You can have it all. And you can still take your own life if you don't sort out your, your, your mind. If you don't uh, do the work to make sure that you're mentally secure and fortified you have to keep God first you have to have God in your life you have to be a prayerful person and you engage with the scriptures and you pray to the Lord and he will give you peace beyond human understanding and then you know love children the things that grant you the sort of joy and and peace that uh, material things cannot give you. So, like, having tons of money is amazing, right? You get to travel, you get to buy yourself nice things, nice cars, nice clothes, whatever the hell you want. But that gets old after a while, because that's how human beings are. We get desensitized to these things. They're not really fulfilling in the long term. Um, no amount of sex is gonna make you happy like you know you can be out just sleeping around having all these orgasms oh my god but after a while that kind of gets like lonely and like you, you want you want emotional connections and you start to feel kind of dirty nothing beats having a so from my perspective a woman who loves you and gets you and you get to talk to her and get to you know, do things throughout the day with her, going out, doing this, doing that, and that's your your confidant. That's that's your 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 friend in many ways. That's you just you you know you've got a, a buddy for life that you get to fuck as well, and it's a lifetime thing. And you got your kids, and the way you love your kids is on a whole other level as well. And they get to grow up, and they eventually become your friends as well. And like, what's better than that? What could possibly like it, it just what, what the fact that people want anything outside of that, like more than that rather. It's just uh it, it's silly and it's it's why the, the, so many people have so many different mental health issues and whatnot. Because we prioritize the wrong things. <laughs> we prioritize the wrong things, guys. People think they're 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 special. But not like, we're actually very simple creatures. If you get married, have children, you will be happy if you do it the right way. If you do it the right way, you'll find that these things are challenging. Yes, are they challenges? Of course, they're challenges. Raising kids is not easy. St staying married is not easy. You're 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 shackled to this person for a lifetime. You're gonna fight, maybe here and there. I don't think it has to be ugly fighting. I reject this notion that you have to be complete, like at, at complete odds with each other constantly. I don't think that's normal or healthy. But you know, you might have disagreements here and there. I, I think it'll be difficult from time to time. Maybe. But yeah, look, there'll be challenges, but over like that's life in general. Every adventure, like you think about any story centered around an adventure characters going on a, on a journey yeah these challenges they have to beat the, the troll that's guarding the dungeon and that that requires them to go here and get this special weapon and da, da, da. like there's all sorts of it's a journey but by the time the journey is complete they look back like wow that was amazing and look at what we got 
and it's all about the friends you made along the way, you know, all that sentimental stuff. Um, it's beautiful. And you just you become you become materialists, prioritizing things that don't matter. Your career does not matter. You going on your little trips around the world, it does not matter. Uh, being able to have sex with, with strangers does not matter. Whatever you think matters, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter in the long term. When you're old as hell and you're alone and you don't really have anyone to take care of you and you don't have kids, you don't. everyone's kind of busy because they've got their own families to take care of, I promise you, your photos from your trip in Bali and wherever you, the hell you went, it's going to mean shit. It's not going to matter a little bit. Invest in the things that actually matter. matter. Get married, have children. That's going to be a big message of mine in perpetuity. Because a lot of people don't understand this. A lot of people don't understand this. Again, a lot of people think they're special. You're not. You're not special. Human beings are very simple creatures. We're paradoxical creatures. We're simple, we're complex, but we're simple. We're simple in terms of what it takes to make us happy. You know, I have to pray to end all my videos. So, dear Father God, I thank you for this individual watching this right now. Thank you for making them whole and unique and guiding them on a path towards peace, prosperity, and purpose. Thank you for blessing this person with wonderful people in their life. Love them, take care of them, and bring the absolute best out of them. And thank you for maintaining the ones that are there to do the same thing. Thank you for blessing this person with love and marriage and sustaining that love and marriage and making you very, very happy. Thank you for blessing this person with a spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for all the wonderful things in life. And by giving thanks, they can find even more peace and blessings. Uh, let your presence be felt in this person's life. So that you love them. You're always going to be there for them. In your mighty name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.